Community-based adaptation, or CBA for short, uh, refers to helping some of the most vulnerable households and communities, whether they're villages in rural areas or households living in slums in urban areas around the world, who are going to be impacted by uh, various climatic impacts from floods to droughts to hurricanes and cyclones, uh, to enable them to understand what the problems they're going to be facing are, are likely to be, and then enable them to build their adaptive capacity to be able to uh, adapt to those uh, inevitable and unavoidable impacts of climate change at the household and community level. There are some things that households and communities simply can't do which are going to have to be done by higher levels of authority and national governments, but at the community level there is much that can be done by imparting capacity and knowledge to these communities for them to be able to take the actions that are needed to prevent the impacts being uh, very bad. Community-based adaptation started about a decade ago and uh, IID have been holding an annual international conference on community-based adaptation over these years. Uh, each year in a different country, we just held the one this year in June of 2017 in Uganda in Kampala. And these events attract several hundred practitioners and researchers and funders from all over the world who work on community-based adaptation. So it's a very fast expanding area of intervention and work. Many NGOs work on it. Increasingly, local governments are working on community-based adaptation. And so I, I would say we now have experience in the thousands of uh, examples around the world mainly in developing countries, but increasingly also even in developed countries where local communities are realizing that they will also be impacted by climate change and they need to take action at the community level. And so we have a, a network of thousands of communities around the world who happen to be living in climate vulnerable areas and are coming up with ways to deal with those impacts and sharing that knowledge with each other across the globe. So when we talk about institutions in the context of community-based adaptation, we are talking about a very broad set of institutions, which includes the norms and cultural practices of communities themselves, sometimes indigenous communities with their own norms and practices, and not just formal institutions like governments or even NGOs or funding agencies, although they are also part of that institutional landscape. And so all of them firstly need to be sensitized about the needs of the most vulnerable communities, and make that central to whatever interventions they're thinking about doing. So I guess the, the bottom line is that community-based adaptation requires a bottom-up uh, mentality and, and view from whoever is doing the intervention. They must take into account the views of the local most affected communities at the household level and the community level in order to come up with whatever adaptation means or techniques or interventions they want to do. So far, we've had quite a large amount of uh, investment from the global of, uh, community in the billions of dollars, uh, mainly from the rich developed countries to support developing countries to tackle the climate change problem. Uh, the problem with uh, the disbursement of that is that it's highly skewed in favor of taking mitigation actions rather than adaptation actions. Uh, it's about an 80-20 split when it should be more like a 50-50 split and it's something that developing countries are asking for a more evenly balanced split between mitigation and adaptation. But even within the adaptation funds, uh, a very small amount in the order of 20% actually reaches the most vulnerable communities. And that again is an imbalance that we would like to correct and we are asking for at least 50% of the adaptation funds be targeted at the most vulnerable communities and more importantly be monitored to be able to see whether or not it's actually reaching them and actually making any difference for them to enhance their ability to cope with the impacts of climate change. I think from our point of view we think it's both a practical and a moral imperative to prioritize any funding that comes from the global level to the most needy, to the most vulnerable and at the moment that's not happening fast enough. There's a growing awareness that adaptation is very important and within adaptation focusing on the most vulnerable is important whether it's in the developed or the developing world. Uh, 
So there are two uh, levels at which we need to push for greater recognition. Firstly, at the global level with the funding availability, uh, it's not enough going to adaptation in general and not enough within adaptation going to the most vulnerable communities. We need to find better mechanisms of making that happen. It tends to go for big projects at the national level of which very little flows down to the local uh, most vulnerable communities. The second uh, area of intervention is at the national level within governments. Governments often also tend to be very top-down rather than bottom-up, tend not to be taking into account the needs and the views of the most vulnerable communities. And so they need to take a much bigger uh, and better participatory approach in planning what they want to do on adaptation and then when they start investing, making sure that investments flow to the most vulnerable. We are making progress on both fronts, but we're not making fast enough progress and we have to make it much faster.